Welcome to this webinar on myopia, its management, and Milo from Mark Enervy, presented by Sergio Diaz. My name is Jim Dixon. I'm the Head of Professional Affairs in the UK and Ireland for Mark Enervy, and also present this evening is Paco Mateus, the Global Head of Professional Affairs for Mark Enervy. My intention was to wish everyone a good evening, but I'm aware that for some of you, it's the afternoon, and for some of you, it's even still morning. So wherever you are, we extend a warm welcome to this webinar. In the course of the session, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat function and time allowing, we will answer them at the end of the presentation. As Sergio's presentation is very comprehensive, I will not take up any more of the time on this introduction, but instead hand you over to Sergio, um, who will share his findings on his study of myopia management and the efficacy of Milo in Caucasian children. So I would suggest Paco, um, we'll go off camera and uh, we can uh, we can support in the background. OK, Sergio, it's, it's okay. yours. Um, one moment, OK. OK, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for coming today. And um, I would like to thank uh, Jim and Mark and Obi and uh, Paco for the invitation to participate in this webinar and the opportunity to share my knowledge in the field of myopia control. First, I will make a small introduction with the recent st studies on myopia and the key points to deal with when facing myopia control. Uh, secondly, I will talk uh, about the study carried out with Milo for two years in myopic children between the age of 6 and 13. Okay. The why of uh, myopia control. Uh, in this study by Holden et al., uh, we can see an estimate of the prevalence of myopia in 2050. Uh, myopia, high myopia estimates from 2000 to 2050 suggest a significant increases in prevalence globally, with implications for planning service, uh, including managing and preventing myopia-related ocular complications and vision loss among almost 1 billion people with high myopia. They included data from uh, 145 studies covering 2.1 million participants. They estimate, estimated 1.4 billion people with myopia, 22.9% uh, uh, of the world population, and 163 million people with high myopia, 2.7% uh, of the world population in 2000. Uh, we predict by 2050 there will be 4.7 billion people with myopia. 49.8% uh, uh, of the world population and uh, uh, 938 million people with high myopia. The most recent studies in the UK, uh, UK on the growth of myopia indicate an increase. In this study, in the year uh, 2018, by one et al. in the urban population of London, uh, Morfield's Eye Hospital, they present a 10-year review of children attending a secondary and tertiary uh, eye care facility in London, focusing on the proportion of glasses prescription for myopia and progression rates. The proportion of uh, children with mild spherical equivalent uh, less than minus uh, three diopters or moderate uh, myopia between uh, minus uh, three diopters and less than minus uh, six diopters increased for, from uh, 27 in 2008 and 24% in 2009 to 32% in 2016 and 2017. According to the IMI, uh, we can classify myopia as uh, axial myopia. Uh, a myopic refractive state uh, can be attributed to excessive axial elongation or refractive myopia, 
uh, can be attributed to change in the structure, structure or location of, of ima image forming structures in the eye, that is uh, the cornea and or the lens. Or uh, the last uh, secondary uh, myo myopia, uh, a myopic refractive state for which a single specific cause can be identified. Uh, for example, drugs, coronary disease, or si uh, systemic clinical syndrome. That is not a, recogn a recognized uh, population risk factor for the, the development of myopia. Uh, the key point in managing uh, myopia is understanding that even a uh, minus one diopter of myopia uh, carries an additional lifetime risk of uh, posterior subcapsular cataract, uh, retinal detachment, and um, myopic uh, maculopathy. Uh, a convincing case has been previously made by pediatric uh, ophthalmologist Ian Flitcroft that the, the delineation of physiological and pathological myopia is not valid, as the term uh, physiological in place that uh, there is a level of myopia uh, which could be considered uh, safe in, comp in comparison to emetropia. Using our ra radios, which uh, describe the increased risk, risk of a condition over a reference of one, uh, this being the risk of emetropia, uh, the, uh, the image uh, above summary fleet crop data, which shows that even one diopter uh, of uh, myopia uh, doubles the risk of uh, maculo, uh, myopic uh, maculopathy and, uh, uh, and cataract and tri triples the risk of uh, re uh, retinal detachment compared uh, to the metrope. At uh, three diopters of myopia, the risk of, uh, of uh, uh, cataract uh, is triples uh, with the risk of retinal detachment and uh, uh, myopic maculopathy being nine times that of the metrope. Higher levels of uh, myopia bring more eye weathering risk. Uh, this art article, uh, read, written by optometrist Mark Bullimer, sends an important message, uh, which is that every diopter matters. Uh, only an increase of one diopter in myopia is associated with a a 67% increased risk in the prevalence of uh, myopic maculopathy. And slowing the progression uh, of myopia uh, by one diopter uh, reduce the probability that a patient, a patient will develop a myopic uh, maculopathy by uh, 40%. Is a axial lens measurement a clinical necessity? Uh, uh, well, uh, while uh, the opters of myopia uh, are easily measurable uh, and an indicator of risk, ultimately, myopia control is about uh, axial length control. Large scale uh, data from Tideman et al. Uh, indicated a stronger correlation between axial length and visual impairment, impairment than between refractive error and visual impairment. Taiman and colleagues from the Netherlands evaluated the prevalence of lifelong visual impairment with increasing axial length using data from over uh, 10,000 Dutch people with an uh, average uh, age of uh, 61 years uh, and an axial length of 24 to 26 millimeters was used uh, as the referent. If you look at the table uh, on the right, uh, axial length of uh, 26 to 28 millimeters doubles the risk uh, of visual impairment by IH60, uh, uh, while uh, uh, 28 to uh, 13 millimeters increased the risk by 11 times, and, and an axial length of uh, 30 millimeters or more by uh, uh, 25 times. normal uh, versus uh, myopic change. Uh, what values of uh, axial growth are, are normal? Uh, as uh, we can see in the clear study, mm -hmm. the normal value of axial growth is 0.1 millimeters per year. 
uh, the fastest growth occurs uh, before the age of, of 10. And um, uh, greater than uh, 0.22 millimeters uh, per year of change may indicate fast progressors. On the other hand, in the SCORM study uh, from Asia, the, value, the values are higher when, when carried out, uh, maybe uh, because uh, 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 with Asian children. Fastest growth occurs to bef uh, before the age 10. How do we use this measurement of Taina from the axial length? The best way uh, to utilize uh, axial length is likely to involve comparison of the measure against validated percent percentile growth charts. Examples for that and Chinese uh, children have been published. Uh, this would mean uh, taking a, ch a child's axial length measurement, uh, comparing it against a chart specific uh, to their age, ethnicity, ethnicity uh, and, and gender, and determining what percentile of eye uh, length they currently represent. The 50th uh, percentile represents the mean, and early research on this is indicating that children in the uh, 75th uh, percentile uh, or higher are at greatest risk of further high myopia. Uh, over time, if a child's percentile decreases with time, this will indicate a, a successful uh, myopia management strategy. Well, uh, um, uh, let's see an example of how to use the axial length uh, percentile table. We have uh, two patients with the same age and similar spherical equivalent but with different axial lengths. Uh, which of the two children should we worry about and what more? According to the table of uh, percentiles, we should be more concerned uh, about patient A, who is in the uh, 98th percentile and will have a 53% chance of develop developing high myopia than in the case of patient B, who is close to the uh, 75th uh, percentile and the chance and the chance that develop high myopia are only uh, 1%. Treat your patients with myopia like your patients with glaucoma. Uh, while higher diopters uh, mean more risk of pathology and vision impairment, but it's not guaranteed uh, for an individual although the relationship is clear across a population. Similarly, higher IOP uh, means more risk of vision impairment from glaucoma, but as uh, we know, there's normal tension glaucoma and ocular hypertension, which may not advance to glaucoma. Just as our uh, minus four diopters myope might have an axial length greater than 26 millimeters, the next uh, uh, minus uh, four diopters could have an, an axial length less than 26 millimeters if his or her myopia is more refractive, cornea lens power, than axial. In the same way, two patients when, with an IOP of 26 millimeters uh, may have a different profile of, of risk uh, for glaucoma, especially if one of them has a thicker cornea, reducing uh, our index of concern. Uh, I would like to make some comparisons between objective and subject subjective uh, measures. First, uh, the OCT with the axial length. Axial length is an objective uh, measure of the structures of the eyeball. It shows uh, physical and structural change over time second. Uh, over time, uh, second, the visual field uh, with, refract, uh, with refraction. Refraction is a subjective uh, measure of visual function. Uh, shows a functional change uh, in refractive error and quality of life of patients. I'm sure it's safe to say that uh, we're uh, all good at explaining glaucoma and its lifelong eye health uh, risk even though EOP isn't a clear-cut diagnostic factor. 
In the same way, uh, we can uh, uh, be just as, as good uh, as explaining that more myopic diopters like IOP increase eye health risk. While, uh, while uh, there's not no warranties uh, of eye disease on seat with higher myopia or elevate, elevated IOP, the risks are real. There are uh, three clinical uh, pillars ar around which uh, to build your myopia management strategy for each individual patient. Uh, first, uh, pro provide advice on environment uh, with uh, the two hour rule. Try to get two hours of outdoor time per day and limit laser screen time to two hours per day in a school aged children. Uh, the 2020 rule, uh, take uh, regular break, breaks uh, from reading to avoid continuous fixation at near. And the uh, elbow, elbow rule, uh, avoid whole reading material or screens too close by keeping an elbow to hand uh, distant away. Uh, uh, other uh, pillars uh, is uh, uh, optical treatment, prescribed optical treatments. Uh, uh, should be discussed and offered as first line, and they can uh, both correct and control uh, myopia. Prescribe uh, the most effective optical treatment av available to you, uh, which is suitable for that child and family. Uh, and the last uh, binocular uh, vision is relevant to myopia management, as previously detailed. Since binocular vision disorders, such as uh, esophoria and accommodative lag, uh, have been implicated in myopia progression, and also we present provide the greatest, uh, greatest efficacy results for progressive spectacular lens myopia management, evaluation and management of uh, these issues could provide added benefit to myopia control treatment. Uh, well, uh, myopia control strategy decision three. Uh, the authors have uh, refined uh, myopia control strategies from the experience uh, treating more than uh, 800 children who were followed at the Montreal School Optometry Clinic. They developed uh, a treatment algorithm, uh, algorithm uh, now as the Montreal experience. Contrary to many other uh, myopia control strategies, uh, treatment mod modalities are selected after careful e evaluation of a patient's parameters, rate of progression, age of myopia onset, corneal parameters, and pupil area. Uh, the risk factors for ocular pathology uh, uh, grow charts and taking into account the patient's lifestyle and potential compliance. This represents a customized approach for each patient. It's very interesting. Uh, environmental factors, uh, an average of at uh, least uh, uh, 90 minutes of outdoor time per day reduce, uh, reduce the risk of myopia in, in school age children. The key uh, message is to try to get children to spend two hours a day outdoors. Although the relationship between time in front of electronic device and myopia is still being determined. There is an, an important relationship between more time working in air vision and myopia, and especially in combination with re reduced time outdoors. Assessment and management of binocular vision. Uh, Although uh, there is not much evidence on how correction of binocular vision defect affects the development or progression of myopia, it would make sense that if a child has a binocular vision defect related to the onset of myopia, the management of the disorder can reduce the risk. Uh, key conditions to consider are uh, sophoria and accommodative lag, which have been linked to the development and progression of myopia. Intermittent exotropia was also related to myopia. If we observe esophoria and accommodative uh, lag in combination with a lower than normal level of hyperopia for age, 
uh, plus uh, 0.75 or less at uh, six, uh, seven years is the stronger risk fa factor for the future my myopia. Uh, then, cont then, control, then control of binocular vision is our main tool for these children, in addition to recommending spending more time outdoors. Uh, most uh, current met methods of uh, myopia control are based on the peripheral uh, refraction uh, hypothesis, which considers that ocular growth is driven by uh, hypermetropic uh, peripheral defocus. According to the IMI, uh, the validated methods for managing uh, myopia are pharmacologic, like atropine, pirenzepine, peripheral defocus of thermic lens, Myosmart, Stelest, Orthokeratology, uh, soft contact, contact lens, environmental interventions, or la, the combination of different, different therapies. Okay, now let's talk uh, about the study, Milo Project. The authors, uh, Sergio Díaz, Amaya Urquía, and Jesús Carballo, declare uh, they have no conflict of interest or financial relationship with the industry, academic competition, or personal relationships. Mercedes Burgos belongs to the contact lens manufacturing company, Markenovi, as director of R&D uh, new products and clinical trials. Well, uh, the objective is to assess the efficacy in managing the growth of myopia in children with the new design of a contact lens based on extended depth of focus either or in two years of follow-up. The location was uh, Milan Zacoy uh, in Bilbao, Spain. We continue with the sample. Uh, a total of 90 myopic children of Caucasian ethnicity were recruited for the study. Uh, the age range uh, 6 to 13 years old. 45 children were assigned to the control group with distance single vision spectacles, and 45 children were assigned to the experimental group with Milo. The refractive inclusion criteria was a myopic progression greater than 0.5 diopters in the last 12 months, a spherical equivalent between minus 0.75 diopters and uh, minus uh, 10 diopters and the cylinder uh, less uh, than uh, one diopter were excluded. Children previously fitted with contact lens or any treatment to control myopia. Uh, a study of systemic or ocular disease or use of systemic or topical ocular medications. Methods. Uh, this study was conducted in accordance with the principles of uh, Declaration of uh, Helsinki and was approved by the Institutional Review Board of the Hospital Clinico San Carlos in Madrid. All participants were voluntarily uh, included in the study after signing a uh, written informed consent from the legal guardians. Uh, all measurements uh, were performed by the same optometrist, me, and the Eye health uh, was reviewed quarterly by the same ophthalmologist, Dr. Amaya Lukia. Uh, methods, uh, high contrast visual acuity uh, was assessed uh, using OptoTAF, Smart Things for Vision uh, in Spain, under photopic conditions. Uh, the axial length was measured with the IO Master 700. Uh, uh, a serious uh, uh, topographer to measure corneal parameters and uh, thus be able to make a personalized, personalized fitting of, of contact lens and the slit lamp uh, for uh, eye health of the children. Well, uh, Milo design and characteristic, uh, characteristics, uh, Philcom 5B uh, with 75% uh, water content, Optical zone uh, with head of technology, uh, refractive, non monotonic, and periodic uh, design, class one UV filter, uh, 
And uh, the most important thing in this case is that is, it is a customizable contact lens with all the parameters, which facilitates the fitting in children. I would like to emphasize the importance of a good adaptation of the contact lens, since one of the keys to um, myopia control is the centering of the lens. If the contact lens is not centered uh, correctly, the treatment will not be done correctly. And also, pro probably, the child will not be seen correctly. Uh, I have found ca uh, cases of children who visit the clinic with another type of uh, contact lens to control uh, myopia, in which the lens is not centered uh, correctly. And that is because we have not been demanding when choosing the parameters of the contact lens. Uh, we must always always perform a corneal topography to determine uh, which diameter and base uh, curve is appropriate for each child. And I can uh, assure you uh, that there is a, a, a great variety in children and, and that in the study, I had uh, to use uh, diameters from uh, 15.50 to 15.0 millimeters. Uh, they were given a questionnaire adapted to children for comfort and vision. Uh, the questionnaire uh, rated from one very poor to 10, ex excellent, in steps of one unit and answered uh, after 10 hours of contact lens use. Uh, the, the, the studies categories were uh, handling, uh, insertion and extraction, comfort after insertion and before removal, Clarity of vision, uh, distant, intermediate, uh, near and, and night. Vision stability, far, near and night. And uh, the overall satisfaction with the contact lens and to continue, continue using it. Uh, we have uh, used, used SPSS vers, uh, version 28.0 as a st statistical program. A change in axial length and spherical equivalent uh, were the, prim the primary outcome variables. The comparison of the variation of uh, axial length, spherical equivalent, and visual equity uh, in the follow up period between the control and control contact lens groups uh, was performed with repeated measures ANOVA. We turn now to the demographic and genetic uh, res results. Uh, no statistically uh, significant difference were, were found in age and sex between both groups. In the contact lens group, there was a higher number of children with only one myopic parent. Uh, the number of uh, both myopic parents uh, was higher in the control group uh, with specs. In this table, uh, we can see the statistical results at uh, baseline 6, uh, 12, uh, 18, and 24 months of axial length, equivalent, uh, equivalent spherical, and high contrast visual equity. Uh, in the case of visual equity, uh, we see that there is an improvement from the baseline until uh, the six month. This improvement is due to the fact that the child neuro adapts to a uh, design. Uh, spherical equivalent results, uh, the overall efficacy uh, uh, after the adaptation of the contact lens was 45% after 24 months of use. Uh, minus uh, uh, 0.62 uh, diopters versus uh, minus 1.13 diopters, respectively. Uh, if we compare uh, our studies with those uh, carried out by Sankar Yuduk et al., after 24 months of use, we can see, we can see an improvement of 13%. Axial length uh, result, results, uh, the efficacy of contactless adaptation was uh, 44% after 24 months of use compared uh, to the control group. Uh, 0.37 uh, uh, millimeters versus 0.66 millimeters re respectively. 
uh, if we compare uh, our studies uh, with those uh, carried out by San Cadidug at all, after uh, 24 months of use, we can see an improvement of uh, 19%. The results of the vision and comfort test uh, uh, were all of them show it an average uh, rating value equal to or greater than uh, nine. Uh, good subjective uh, visual quality was observed at all distance. And uh, satisfactory results on the subjective uh, questionnaire were similar to previous uh, subjective ratings reported with uh, either of uh, contact lens, Vitilia et al. and SA et al. Uh, uh, as far as eye health is concerned, we are only 16 uh, cases with very slight corneal staining with Milo lenses and abandonment due to insecurity in handling the lens. Uh, some contact lens tears appeared in the training period. Um, uh, conclusions, uh, the use of uh, the uh, ED of uh, contact lens marketed under uh, Milo uh, in myopic children reduced reduce the progression of refractive value and axial elongation compared uh, to the control group. And the use uh, of uh, the Either of uh, contact lens in children and teenagers uh, between six and uh, 15 years of age with non pathological childhood onset myopia has positive effects in managing myopia progression compared to the use of ophthalmic lens after two years of follow up. And uh, the Milo design uh, provides a good uh, vi visual acuity at all distance. And what is the future? Uh, we are currently starting a study uh, with the myelotoric lens with children between 6 uh, to 13 years old. And it is inter interesting since now we can correct cylinders of up, of up to 8 diopters. This is the bibliography. And uh, thank you all. I hope uh, that you have uh, found the study interesting and that it helps you in your daily practice and stay above all uh, with the key message uh, that each uh, doctor matters. Uh, we'll, we feel free to ask me any questions. And uh, Jim? Thank you, Sergio, for that most interesting lecture. And for those who wish to watch the lecture again, it will be hosted on the UK Mark Enemy website. Uh, as far as questions goes, we have a few coming through. I've got Paco here to, to help as well. And if there's anything that needs to be uh, clarified for you, Sergio Paco can do that in your native language. Uh, one of the questions uh, that came through there was, uh, is Milo a, a, a monthly or a, or a daily uh, a lens? It's a it's a daily wear lens. It's a it's a monthly lens. Uh, it's uh, obviously custom made with these range of parameters, um, but it's a silicon hydrogel. And certainly in the United Kingdom, it is the only silicon hydrogel lens approved for uh, myopia management. Uh, the other question that I've just seen, which I, 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 I uh, is regarding uh, have you considered controlling Milo with my site to compare the two lenses? So Paco, I'm happy to answer this unless you want to. Uh, you're on, you're on mute. So, so th there, there is a, a study has been carried out regarding uh, Milo and my site as a comparison, and uh, we're pleased to confirm that the my the Milo can uh, performs equally well as my site. Um, another question, uh, why did you choose an ad of 1.5 and not higher? Um, my understanding of this, Paco, is that the the in the clinical trials that were done by the Brian Holden Vision Institute in Australia is that they tried multiple versions of the the EDOF, which obviously we use in our our presbyopic lens, uh, our EDOF for presbyopia, which has three ads, uh, and it was the 1.5 that that proved to be give the best efficacy, but also uh, the best performance uh, visually for the children when it came as a comparison to to single vision uh, contact lenses. Um, I'm happy to hand over Paco if you have anything further to add on that. 
No, I think I think you answered the, the questions um, uh, rightly. That was the, the design that was chosen to, to have the perfect, well, the sweet spot between efficacy and visual performance, like you were saying. One of the things that this product really uh, well, it, it's high, it's you know outperforms is really the fact that because of the of design is less sensitive to decentration, uh, pupil decentration, uh, lens decentration, even though we are able to control better the performance of the lens with the multiple base curves and diameters which it is produced in. And and yeah, and the fact that it's made in a silicon hydrogel lens, like you rightly said, which as um, Sergio mentioned, compliance is really, really important. We're asking patients to wear the lenses as, as long as possible. And therefore having a high decay, it's, uh, it's something that we believe is very, very important as well, uh, very much uh, well, critical. The in 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 terms of the parameters, just to mention that we like we said it's a made to order lens. We have available, as uh, he mentioned, now a Toric version, which will be sorry, it's, it's available to certain customers who are right now in our direct markets. Uh, part of an external study, we're hoping for 2023 to be the full launch on, uh, globally. So yeah, what's what we're looking forward to that. Watch watch this space. Um, also, I have a few questions that people have been sending me. I don't know, I don't know why in the... Yeah, you're very in, popular. It seems Sergio. So, well, some... Um, actually, one one was asking, is your study already published in in any um, um, well, journal or...? Um... So, uh, you're mute. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, now uh, it's in in process uh, to publish because uh, uh, we think uh, that uh, only year uh, of of a study it's not uh, re relevant and mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, two three months. Uh, published uh, 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 work in, in a, a European uh, a, a paper or mm -hmm. European paper in two or three months you think it will yes. be up there fantastic the the other question is um, would you recommend uh, combining Milo with other myopia management strategies uh, and if so which which ones? Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a, a difficult, a dif a difficult question. Uh, I think uh, that is important. Uh, utilize uh, the the growth chart uh, to follow uh, the the history the, uh, of of the patient and. Uh, and depends of the uh, uh, myopia progression. Uh, uh, we uh, we need uh, uh, additional uh, treatment or change uh, the the treatment the treatment. Como uh, 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 por eso es es importante. Uh, uh, This is why it's so important. Por eso es importante. Eh, el seguimiento eh, con, la, con la tabla de percentiles, eh, porque eh, te permite, digamos, eh, actuar en función de, eh, de eh, cómo está yendo ese paciente. Yeah. So he's saying that this is why it's so important to follow up with the growth charts to, to work out whether, well, to assess the, the patient's uh, per, well, the, the, how the patient is doing with certain strategies and whether and a change is, is needed. Okay, uh, Fatima asked me uh, how often will you review patients on Milo? Uh, uh, three months. Uh, uh, every every three months, uh, uh, patients uh, go to the clinic and, and and follow follow up. I think it's important uh, uh, to reduce uh, the follow up at three months. And that certainly ties in with the Milo dossier, which is available in multiple uh, languages, which uh, go, uh, shows the recommended uh, um, aftercare schedule uh, for for uh, for a patient on Milo 
Milo treatment. Um, also a question there about uh, mm. to fit Milo, do yes, you have to have, have on you? Yeah. Uh, to, so, so do you, you, you were, yeah, you do were you saying. have to have a topographer? Uh, well, a topographer is uh, uh, advantageous for 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 many reasons. Um, uh, we work uh, on the design and the fitting of our lenses by by utilising the sagittal height. So, taking the the K readings and uh, a, a, a manual measurement with a PD ruler um, of the HVID will enable us to calculate the sag of the cornea and ultimately the sag of the lens. So the uh, um, and that can be done in three ways. One is you can uh, use the fitting tables and calculate it yourself. You can use the online fitting calculator or depending on the market that you're in, uh, we have a, um, a, a technical support desk where you can, and certainly in the UK and our Ireland customers and in some and other markets, uh, uh, you can phone up the technical support desk with your measurements and they will talk you through the, uh, the lens that they're going to order. There is a study that shows that uh, measuring uh, with a PD rule, uh, it was a small study of only 30, 30 or so patients, but it showed that uh, using a PD rule to measure the HVI, HVID was uh, was perfectly ad adequate for, this, for these requirements. OK, we have also Bridget uh, asking, are there any tips on measuring young kids' eye length? They don't sit still very well. Mm, on, on missing young, young kids' eye length. I... Sí, le está preguntando que si les sí. puedes dar algún tipo de truco, algún consejo para que se sienten tranquilos y poder medirles un poco más fácilmente. Ah, eh, in, in, the, in the clinic, eh, I have eh, many... Eh, 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 chocolate and eh, candies, <laughs> no, yes, yes, and and I have a, a little toys in the in the, uh, in the uh, no uh, the children uh, uh, in, in my case, how is it? They portan bien, o sea, eh, están... they, they they comply, they behave really well. Yes, in his case, excellent. Was that part of the criteria for selection the patients that they were well behaved? Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's just a joke, ah. a, a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, do we have any more? Um, yeah, there's one there by David Berkov, which is uh, and and uh, by by how much have you slowed the progression of myopia over the two year study uh, reduction in prescription progression? slowing actual length growth question mark so uh, maybe paco that's uh, i don't know if you want to put that in spanish and uh, yeah she's but we have, uh, we have we have the charts as well which yeah I, yeah i think i think uh, sergio is, is finding it right um yes yes i i see uh, yes uh, axial uh, uh, reduction in refractive progression is here uh, after uh, 24 months of use was a uh, 45%. In the opters is here is a uh, minus 0.662 diopters versus a uh, minus 1.13 diopters uh, uh, for a control group. Yeah. And uh, in axial length resu results, the efficacy uh, was uh, 44 percent after 24 months uh, uh, in in millimeters uh, 0.37 millimeters versus 0.66 millimeters uh, 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 from group a uh, control group yeah and the other um the other question i've seen uh, was uh, what base curve do you choose uh, first? So that very much goes back to the sort of fundamental fitting principles of using a, a custom uh, a custom made lens that uh, we have the option to fit as accurately as possible rather than being limited to one predetermined base curve and predetermined diameter uh, chosen for uh, for the average eye. And as we know, when we're dealing with children, there is anything but but average. So uh, the base curve would would very much dependent on the the uh, uh, the K reading 
coupled with the uh, HVID, which would then uh, allow us to calculate the best base curve uh, and diameter of the lens. Uh, question is that, uh, and I think this must be relating to uh, something that we were talking about, is that is that with normal glasses or stellist glasses we've been, been asked? Sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that's referring to. Normal glasses. Normal glasses. glasses. Yeah, the, yes, the control yes. group. Mo monofocal monofocal uh, 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 lenses. Right. Yeah, I've, I've got another question here. Um, it's asking, is there a specific age over which you would stop treatment? Uh -huh. uh, it's a, a, a question, uh, important question. Uh, uh, te, te digo en español, Paco, para que lo digas mm -hmm. tú luego más rápido en inglés. Sí. Uh, si tú uh, uh, sigues una, uh, pues eso, la, la tabla de percentiles y bueno, haces el seguimiento al niño y al niño no le está subiendo la miopía, yo pienso que para qué, para qué le vas a quitar el, el tratamiento. Uh, es decir, que eh, eh, no, no hay una edad establecida en la, que, en la que quitas el tratamiento, porque se supone que ya es un miope que progresa y esto le está ayudando a, a, que, no, a que no progrese. Con lo cual, eh, no, no les puedo decir que haya una edad en la que yo diga eh, paro el tratamiento, porque, porque no es así. De hecho, una de las preguntas que leo por aquí es el tema de los adultos jóvenes o, o adultos con miopía eh, progresiva, eh, en los que no hay una evidencia científica eh, que diga que, que este tipo de lentes frena la progresión, pero, eh, pero sí, que, sí que tiene un sentido a que, a que les ayuda, porque, porque les ayuda eh, eh, sobre todo eh, a acomodar, eh, al introducir esa aberración esférica, eh, eh, les reduce el laje acomodativo y eh, todo eso les, les, les ayuda. Y eh, parece ser que sí que hay cierta relación. Entonces, eh, por un lado, no hay una edad establecida en la que dejaría de, eh, de quitar un tratamiento, porque si funciona, ¿para qué lo voy a quitar? Y, eh, y segundo, que pues eso, en, en, en adultos jóvenes, eh, yo lo que hago particularmente en, en la clínica es adaptar la lente, porque digamos que mal, mal no le va a hacer. ¿eh? Y no hay, no hay, no hay otra, otra, digamos, otra, otra opción. ¿eh? And I'm glad and I'm glad you don't expect me to answer it. So <laughs> well, I think I'll start from uh, from the end of the of the answer. Like although there is doesn't seem to be an evidence that you know that this lens would would uh, would stop with um, my uh, my management well, properties for this for for adults and with progressive myopia. Uh, he feels that it's something that would still, I mean, it doesn't hurt and it would, it makes sense that it would help them with the, with the myopia management. So what he is doing, he, he doesn't seem, to, he doesn't think there is an age in which you need to stop in a specific age. Um, what he does is use the growth charts uh, um, and see how the, how the patients perform against those. And depending on the change he sees on those, then he can consider, uh, well, get, uh, getting them to stop the, the wear or not. But in any case, his first, I mean, in the general rule would be if it's not hurting um, and, and, and it seems to be working, why, why stopping it? OK. And the, and the last one from my side, um, it's is the uh, is, is the pupil diameter important in terms of myopia management? Uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, yes, 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 it's important. Uh, bueno, voy a hablarlo porque es la nota. Hay estudios sobre la pupila. Uh, uh, pues al final en la pupila es un modulador de, de luz y de entrada de señal. Y digamos que, que la calidad de señal uh, parece ser la clave de... Del, del crecimiento del ojo, ¿eh? tanto el desarrollo miópico como el desarrollo hipermetrópico o el, o el, el hemetrópico. Eh, entonces, eh, digamos que, que, claro, que tenemos que conseguir que, que la señal que llega, eh, ese desenfoque miópico que, que, que provocamos, eh, eh, digamos, eh, llegue a donde, donde queremos eh, llegar, que es a, a, a esa retina periférica. Entonces, 
claro, eh, eh, esto es dependiente de la pupila. Incluso, pues claro, la pupila está influida por, por la luz, por la distancia de lectura y, y todo ello influye. Eh, por eso eh, eh, Milo eh, tiene, tiene una, una cosa buena que, eh, que, que por el, el diseño que tiene eh, eh, pues, eh, a periódico, eh, no, digamos que eh, 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 no es tan pupilo dependiente como, como otro tipo de lentes, ¿eh? que ser, eh, digamos, centrado eh, no es eh, tan, tan importante ni tan crítico como con otros, otros diseños de lentes. ¿eh? So what he's saying is that of course there are studies that show that the the, the pupil is really important. It's it's it um, as we, as we know uh, we, what we're trying to achieve here is that uh, enough light is arriving to the peripheral retina so we can achieve that myopic defocus which of which we hope will uh, will help with the myopia uh, well with the with the ocular growth and prevent uh, the development of further myopia. Um, so it is as we know the the, the pupillary the pupil size is is affected by the by the amount of light of course but also the reading distance and in that sense um what Sergio was saying is that the he feels that with Milo uh, a periodic design making it it makes it a bit less sensitive to the pupil uh, discentration and the pupil size as well and the, therefore he feels uh, you know that the, that the impact won't be as as um, uh, as noticeable in, in this case um Right, we have another question. Have you experience with association with atropine 0.05%? Eh, no, no. Eh, eh, and, eh, eh, ahora eh, vamos a empezar eh, un, un estudio nuevo, estamos en proyecto de ello, eh, para trabajar Milo con atropina al 0,025%, pero hasta ahora en la clínica no hemos trabajado con atropina para control de miopía. So in his clinic right now, well, he hasn't started yet uh, working with atropine for my um, for my pain management, but he is about to start a study with Milo using 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.025 percent, yes. uh, in which we will assess or they will assess the the, the efficacy of uh, of the combination treatment. Yes. So, I think uh, we draw get close to the hour and uh, if there's no more questions uh, I, I suggest we uh, call uh, call the webinar to an end uh, on behalf uh, of Mark oh if uh, uh, if you have uh, uh, any further questions uh, contact me for mail whenever whenever you need Huh? Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. A uh, final question about uh, there about centration being important and 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 obviously uh, the centration is important. We 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 know that. Uh, but one of the advantages of Milo is its design is that we can be very accurate with the fit because of the multiple uh, base curves uh, and and diameters. But also the uh, the design of the Milo the Edof. Uh, uh, technology allows us to be a, a little bit more forgiving, uh, let's say, than we would be under normal uh, circumstances. Uh, Sergio, just as a final word, um, two key messages, uh, a very comprehensive and interesting study, and uh, we appreciate all your work and your effort uh, and uh, uh, and the efforts that you did to to uh, to to uh, to bring this to us. But if you could uh, if you could just give me two key two key messages that you would like the delegates to take away. Uh, uh. OK, uh, uh, well, one of these uh, is uh, uh, clear is that uh, uh, one diopter mothers or one millimeter uh, mothers. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, it's important uh, uh, the uh, the fitting of uh, 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 the fitting of the lens uh, uh, are uh, cent center uh, and uh, the uh, como digo Paco pues uh, eso que, que, el, que es importante el, que la adaptación de la lente sea personalizada eh, en, los, en, los, es, en los niños porque es, es eh, muy importante eh, que saber que los parámetros eh, de los ojos de los niños son muy variables y que es lo que he visto yo en el estudio. Entonces, eh, el mensaje es eh, eh, personalizar, personalizar la adaptación de la lente de contacto. He's found in his study that the that the the parameters ocular parameters or corneal parameters of uh, of children they tend to uh, 
uh, vary quite a lot. So he feels like having many, well, this sort of personalization capacity with this kind of lenses is something that's that came very, very helpful uh, for him. So he feels like having this range of base course and diameters was definitely uh, uh, of help. Thank you very much, Sergio. Very thank you much. much appreciated. Just, oh, yeah, thank you very thank much. You, so just you. before I, I close, there's just one final a question there, a, a suggestion of uh, thank, and and it's a thank you for uh, for a great webinar. Perhaps consider doing a webinar on other lenses in your portfolio. Uh, so I, I run every month a, a, a custom lens uh, a webinar, which is uh, uh, can, the details can be found or the registration links can be found at the Mark Kennedy uh, Academy, which I, I've put the uh, the web address in the. Uh, uh, in the taskbar or in the chat bar. Uh, there you will also find links to a, a myopia and Milo, uh, an introduction to myopia and Milo, uh, which is very much aimed at practitioners who are new to myopia and are looking to to, to get some information. Some of it is covered uh, 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 by Sergio, but I have to say not just as comprehensive uh, uh, study as, as Sergio's, um, but it's, uh, it's there for you. Uh, and there's also a recording of that as well. We will also host the recording of of tonight's session uh, there as well over the next few days and uh, uh, the, if you um, we will send you the link uh, for those of you who've, who've, uh, who've attended you will receive a follow-up email so thank you very much Sergio thank you very much thank Paco you. for, for supporting uh, this and and thank most you. importantly thank you everyone for giving us an hour of your evening your afternoon or even your morning in some cases and uh, we look forward to to hosting you at some future point so thank you thank you Thank you.